Today I'm using some things that I got from the Dollar Tree and some things from my stash and some things that I had some extra wood that I had to create some haunted Halloween DIYs that are sure to get you in the spirit of spooky season. Are you ready to create something fun? Let's get started. On this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. You will need to pick up some of these maple leaves from Dollar Tree. I also saw some similar ones at Hobby Lobby. And I also picked up a pack of wooden maple leaves so I could try this DIY out multiple ways. And I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color charcoal to paint the leaves and the wood leaf on the front and the back. Since the leaves are fabric, the paint does soak through so I'd suggest giving it a light coat as you can always go back and add another coat of paint if needed. And to finish it off, I'm taking a pink pen and I'm adding in the eyes, mouth, and of course, my little vampire bat will need fangs. Here's how this little vampire bat turned out. I think it turned out super cute. I did go back in with a black paint pen to add a little dot on each eye just so it looked more like an eye. And of course, little fangs look super cute. Today's video is part of the Haunted Halloween Open Invite Challenge, and it's hosted by Jackie from Crafting in a Mimi's World, Ellie from DIY from House to Home, and the guest host is Misty from Gleespin Designs. The link to their channels will be listed below, as well as a link to the playlist, and I really hope you check it out. For DIY number two, you will need a wood round, and you can usually find these at Dollar Tree, and I know they sell them on Amazon as well. And I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color charcoal to give this a coat on the front and back. I got this wood word cut out at Dollar Tree, and I'm painting it with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color plaster. And next, I'm taking a purple paint pen and I'm outlining the words so that it pops and has more dimension. And also you can read the word better. And do y'all remember in the other video when I used glow in the dark paint on those mummies and like you could barely see it? Well, this time I'm adding a generous coat to this wood word. And I'm using ping pong balls and um, some golf balls to make this project, but you could also use something like this that you can find at Dollar Tree. I glued down the Woodward Boo to the middle of the wood round using hot glue. I found these ping pong balls at Dollar Tree last year and I've been looking around for them and haven't found them anywhere lately so I had to supplement with golf balls also from the Dollar Tree and also I haven't found any of those lately either. And I put a dab of glue down and then press the golf ball down. And I started with golf balls since I had less of them to work with. And I was trying to be a bit random, like with the placement. I didn't want it to look like perfect or anything like that. And after I'd used all the golf balls, and then I started with the ping pong balls. Y'all, I knew I was going to want more, but for the life of me, I could not find them in any Dollar Tree that I went to. And I went to a bunch. And I ended up using or buying a small pack from Amazon. And I found these googly eyes in the crafter square at Dollar Tree. And y'all, I hot glued on each of these googly eyes, one by one, one by one, and it took forever. <laughs> and then when I was done gluing them all down, I thought they kind of look like, you know, like, I mean, y'all look at it. <laughs> you tell me what you think they look like. But I was just like, uh-uh, this, this is not going to work. So I couldn't leave them just like that. And my sister suggested adding more googly eyes on kind of like the monster ink eyes type thing. Okay, I'm not even sure if this is gonna make sense because I'm adding this in late, but I just found this footage. So I have obviously added some um, eyes to it. I think I talk about this in the reveal. Anyway, I added some eyes to it and I'm adding some floors that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm not a designer in this area. My bow is eh. I need to work on my bow making skills but I'm just adding in the floral pick that I found at Dollar Tree and just trying to make it look like a wreath. So, you know, sometimes like some of my crafts I think turn out just like so great. And then some of them I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, I found this footage and I thought I'd add it in. And that's what I did. And this is how it turned out. So I added a bunch more eyes to it. Almost looks polka dot-ish, but that's okay. I added some florals from Dollar Tree and those, those black flowers actually had eyes in them too. So it kind of looks like the eyes of the, the wreath. I don't know, um, but I think it turned out cute overall and it doesn't look like, you know, <laughs> how it looked before. I think it looks more spooky. 
hot and sweaty Lisa checking in here and I was cutting out the raven and <laughs> the bottom broke off. But I'm gonna glue that together and I'm gonna go and um, I'm, I'm gonna, oh, I'm just so, I'm proud of my like growth as the jigsaw -er. I don't even know what you call those people, but um, yeah, my woodworking skills, they're improving. So anyway, uh, let's get back to the video. <laughs> Here's another wood piece that I cut using my jigsaw. I think it turned out pretty good. And I used that same Rust-Oleum paint that I've been using to give this a good coat of paint all over. Then I had this wood stake thing. I think I got it from a client's house that was moving and they didn't need it. So anyway, it, was, it came in like a pack of them. I'm painting it with that same charcoal colored paint. For the science part of this, I was thinking to use some paint sticks or maybe some jumbo craft sticks. I'm making the directional sign by the way if I hadn't told you. So I'm trying to figure out how big they should be. Then I remembered that in my stash I had these little directional signs. I got them at Dollar Tree and they don't really have like a wedding section per se but it was by some other stuff that was kind of wedding-ish. So I just took off all the stuff that was on the back. And then I gave that back area a coat of that charcoal paint again. I'm not trying to be too like super clean with it because this is supposed to look like a weathered sign, like an old sign that's outside or something. And then I'm just going to paint the front one green and one purple. So I'm just going over it with the craft paint, a little gloppy, but you know, you get the idea. But y'all, can you still see that? word ceremony in the sign. So then I decided, well, let me give this a coat of white paint first to kind of block out the word. And then I'll go back in and repaint it. And I go over that ceremony word again. Well, here we go. You see me painting over it. So it kind of blocks it out a little bit. And then I'll go back with some more green paint and paint over it. And I paint the other one purple. Oh, well, I guess I was going to show you. I'm painting the other one purple. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what it video footage I left in here and because sometimes I don't know when to quit I decided I could still kind of see the word so I added some charcoal paint to cover the word and then I'm gonna go back in later and I don't think I show you this but I go back in later and of course paint over it with the green and purple again this was probably an extra step that wasn't probably necessary but I cut out these decals using my Cricut and I'm just putting it on my favorite paper transfer tape by Waverly no expressions vinyl <laughs> My goodness. And at this point, I am just going to apply it to the sign. And the nice thing about the paper transfer tape is it doesn't pull up any paint or anything like that. It works wonderfully. And of course I did. It's time to dirty this sign up a little bit. I'm using Jim Holtz Distressing Ink to do that. The ink does come in several different colors, or at least the pack I got came with like several different colors. So you can kind of layer it and make it have some added depth and dimension. This is supposed to look like an outside sign. It's been out in the you know, woods or whatever for a long, long time. So that's why I'm doing that. Now this has nothing to do with what I'm about to tell you, but I have a Facebook crafting group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I run it with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. The link is gonna be in the description box below. I'd love it if you join us. And if you do, please be sure and share a project of what you're currently working on it. We would love to see it. All right, back to the project. I'm taking some washi tape. It's a thin washi tape. I'm not going to use it for anything else. So I'm using it to kind of tape off some diagonal stripes on this, the pole of this stake thing. And I'm putting in another row of it because I'm, I'm trying to create stripes and I need two rows so I can paint in between. Taking some bright orange paint and just painting in between those lines. And again, I'm not trying to be perfect with this. I want it to look a little messy, a little distressed, not so great because my idea was like this was out in the woods for a long time. Pulling back that tape and I'm, I'm trying to carefully do it. I'm not just trying to be willy nilly about it, but just pulling back that tape. Y'all pulled back the tape and guess what? I broke it. <laughs> that bird, it broke earlier. If y'all remember, it broke earlier. And um, why am I showing you nothing? Anyway, it broke again. There it is. Broken. Womp womp. See my poor little bird there. He's actually being held on with two celery <laughs> stalk rubber bands that 
that, you know, is wrapped around my cellar. Hey, it's working. So I'm taking the two directional signs and I'm just trying to figure out which way I want them to go. And I'm taking some hot glue and that's how I'm going to attach the signs to the stake. It's working so far. Okay, y'all. The bird is restored on top of this sign, this stake thing, and something wicked this way comes. I really think the sign turned out pretty good, actually. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, I don't know. And, but yeah, I mean, after the bird fell off, we got the bird reattached. I think the sign looks cute. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I haven't decided where I'm gonna put this, like if I'm gonna put it in my front yard, um, cause it's a stake that you can put in the yard. So anyway, we'll see. Thank y'all so much for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, you guys know what to do. And also I hope that you guys see that not all the DIYs turn out as we intend some break <laughs> midstream and you just kind of gotta, kind of gotta roll with it. So, um, that's just part of crafting and kind of part of the creative process. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or TikTok or over on Instagram or something like that, it's our gray house, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.